take a look at our headline stories. Today, Calaveras County Sheriff's Office detectives arrested the murder of eight-year-old Liella Fowler, Calaveras County Sheriff's Gary Kunt said during a Calaveras Sheriff's press conference held May 11th at 7.30 p.m., starting stating further that at 5.10 p.m., detectives arrested Leela's 12-year-old brother at the Sheriff's Office Valley Springs substation on the charge of homicide. During the past 15 days, we've conducted an expansive investigation. These types of cases require considerable amount of time, and it was our commitment to make sure that we did a thorough as job as possible. We want to express how proud I am of the Calaveras County Sheriff's Office detectives and staff and their professionalism during this case. We've put over 2,000 hours into this investigation to provide Leela Fowler's family with answers to her murder. I also want to thank the many allied agencies who have offered their assistance in this investigation, including the California Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, California Calaveras County's District Attorney's Office, Angels Camp Police Department, Tuolumne County Sheriff's Office, Amador County Sheriff's Office, San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office, Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office, the California Highway Patrol, the California State Parole, United States Marshals Service, Calaveras County Probation Department, and Jenny Lynn Fire Department, and CAL FIRE. Sheriff Kuntz added, finally, I want to thank the citizens of Calaveras County for their patience and constant support. This is an ongoing investigation, and as we know, many of you may have more questions. The Calaveras County Sheriff said, I will not be providing information about the investigation at this time. A possible expansion of an existing 73.6-acre aggregate mine on Highway 88 in the Ione area will be the last item up for discussion with a review and consideration of a final environmental impact report at the next Amador County Planning Commission meeting slated for Tuesday, May 14th, 7 p.m. at the County Administrative Center, 810 Court Street in Jackson. First up on the planner's agenda for discussion and possible action is a request for a five-year renewable use permit to allow a mobile home as a temporary farm labor headquarters. The applicant is Robert and Mayor Lou Robinson of Supervisorial District 5. The location for the permit is 11665 Dixon Road, approximately 600 feet west of the intersection of Dixon Road and Shenandoah Road in the Shenandoah Valley. The next item for the commissioners to decide is a request for zone change for a portion of the parcel involving a boundary line adjustment from the AG Exclusive Agricultural District to the R1A Single Family Residential and Agricultural District. The applicant is Dennis Michael, uh, agent for William, uh, sorry, and Gail Slezik of Supervisorial District 5. The property is located on the north side of Mount Whitney Drive, approximately 100. 1,200 feet north of Fiddletown Road. The third item is a request for a variance from County Code Sections 19.24.45 and 1945.110M to allow for the construction of a concrete block wall fence within 10 feet of the front property line. That's 43 feet from the center line of Ridge Road and 5 feet from the side property line in R1A Zone District. The applicant is Linda Raymond of Supervisorial District 5. The location is for a permit at 12995 Ridge Road, approximately one point quarter miles east of California Highway 49. And the review and consideration of the final environmental impact report certification and possible project decision for the Jackson Valley Quarry Expansion Project is the fourth and last item on the agenda. The project will allow for an expansion of an existing 73.6 acre aggregate mine and processing operation onto the adjacent 85.7 acre site and the reclamation of the project site to open space with large water retention basin surrounded by enhanced oak pine woodlands after mining activities are completed. And the approvals required for the project is a conditional use permit and an amendment to the existing Jackson Valley Quarry Reclamation Plan to include the expansion area. The applicant is George 
Inc. The project is located in Supervisorial District 2 on the south side of Highway 88, approximately one half miles east of the most westerly junction of Jackson Valley Road and Highway 88 in the Ione area. And the Jackson City Council meets Monday, May 13th at 7 p.m. Jackson City Hall at 33 Broadway, Jackson during the regular meeting. The council will conduct a public hearing to consider the adoption of a resolution in the first reading of an ordinance that would rezone and amend the general plan from residential single family to public institutional and a variance for a substandard lot size to expand the St. Sava Cemetery at one make that 714 North Main Street. And the change is sought by Reverend Stephen Tumbus, uh, Serbian Orthodox Church. The council will next discuss and review with possible action to be taken on the Measure E funds, a portion of the transit occupancy tax allocation policy for fiscal year 2013-2014. And lastly, the consideration of opposition to Assembly Bill 5, Amineno, the Homeless Bill of Rights. And it will be reviewed and the City Council will determine if any action will be taken. Amador City has requested a continuance of the review, update, and possible amendment of the sphere of influence of Amador City, which is LAFCO Project 272 Resolution 2013-01, to be continued until the June LAFCO meeting, and that's when the next regular LAFCO meeting will be scheduled on June 20th at 20, in 2013. And personnel throughout the Amador Water Agency were recognized in a formal resolution by AWA directors Thursday for professionalism and dedication in the response to a major water main break in Ione in April and the crews worked throughout the night Saturday April 20th to stop a large water leak that was rapidly draining water from the Ione system. Directors received a letter from Ione Fire Chief Ken Mackey expressing his gratitude for the AWA response to the water main break which was quickly draining our city system and caused a great concern regarding fire protection. As a true professional as they are, they quickly addressed the isol and isolated the leak and dispatched the construction repair crews. They also made notifications to our fire department and Mule Creek Prison. Mackey's letter continued, I have no question that your staff is highly dedicated and professional and truly care about the citizens of our community. And in my view of the entire event, I feel that they performed above and beyond the call of duty to assure the health and safety of our city. And some customers in eastern Ione had no water following the break, and others had very low pressure. Crews replaced a section of the 14-inch diameter pipeline flushed, recharged, and tested the water, and full service was restored by Sunday evening. Directors also approved a resolution that requires individual review for any new connections to untreated water on the Amador Canal. And the water agency anticipates serving customers receiving water from the open canal by a future treated water pipeline if grant funds can be secured. Any new raw water customers along the Amador Canal will need to agree that their raw water service may only be available on an interim basis and may be subject to special conditions including discontinuation once the proposed pipeline is complete. The State Department of Public Health prohibits the agency from connecting residences to the untreated water supply. Let's take a look at our weather. Looks like a beautiful day out there again, like over the weekend with sunny high of 84, low of 57, winds out of the west, 6 to 8 miles an hour on Tuesday, sunny high 83, low of 58, winds out of the northwest, 5 to 9 miles an hour, and on Wednesday, sunny high of 83 with a low of 56. And when I come back, we'll have the supervisor's report with Supervisor Richard Forrester, so stay with us right here on TSBN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.